Hello, everyone. So today we are going to actually look at a uh, tutorial on Google Colab. So in today's tutorial, you are going to actually learn everything about Colab. Like when I say everything, everything. So you can see a list of things that I'm going to actually show you here. So hopefully we can get a good grip of this. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. So what is Google Colab? So first of all, Colab is something, is a kind of Jupyter notebook, which looks sort of like this. And you can actually access it from the Google Drive. Okay, so you can run uh, any kind of Python code right here. So if you have used Jupyter notebook before, Google Colab is very similar. You can actually write code here, for example, A equal to two, you can run it and, and things like that. You can create new cells and you can write more code. Okay, so it's very simple. It's just like Jupyter Notebook. So that is what Google Colab is. And it is not running on your local PC. It is running on the browser. So you don't actually need to install anything to run Python code on Google Colab. You can just directly access the Google Colab and run code here. Now, next question is who can access Google Colab? So anyone who has a Google Drive or a Gmail account basically, so this is my Gmail account. Anyone who has a Gmail account can actually access the Google Colab. So obviously everyone has it, has a Gmail account now, so everyone can access it. So how do we access the Colab? That's the next question. So currently, if you see, if I click new right here, I, I'm inside the Google Drive. So if you're not inside the Google Drive, you have to go there first. So you can uh, click this button and then you can go to Drive and then you will reach the Google Drive, right? So that is pretty simple. So let me go here again. So after going to Google Drive, so I have I have actually gone to this folder called Tutorial. So you can create any folder or you can go anywhere. So Google Colab can be access, accessed from anywhere in the Google Drive. So let me click on New. So again, let me click on More and see you have Google Collaboratory right here. If I click on this, then a new file such as this one will be opened, right? It's very simple. And then you can start working. For example, let me click it here. So you can see that a new file has been opened, right? So it's a new file. So let, let it load first. I will I'll just cancel it for now, okay? So you can see that there is a file named untitled and I can simply rename it, right? So let me delete it for now. The, but, the, but the thing is, if you are using Colab for the very first time, right? So you have never used Colab before, then you are not going to see, you are not going to see this icon right here. So what will you do? There is an option called connect to more apps. You are going to click on here. Then you are simply going to search apps. You are going to write collaboratory. So let me click here. So you can see that I have already installed collaboratory in my Google Drive, so I don't need to install it again. But if it is your first time, then you need to install this. You need to click on this and it will be installed in your Google Workspace. That is that is just as simple as that. So there is nothing complex right here. Then what are the advantages of using Colab? So there are a couple of advantages. First of all, you don't need to install anything. Almost everything is pretty much installed in Google Colab. That is required for Python. Now, if you need to install something, then it is very simple. You can just write, you, you need to write this sign. Remember that Google Colab actually is run as a Linux server. It, it's a kind of Linux server. So anyone who has worked with Linux knows that this kind of not sign is required if you are working remotely sometimes. So you can write pip install or something, maybe Python or some other library, or if you want some specific version, then you can specify that version like this, right? So this is just simple installation and you can install as many libraries as you want, but most of them should be already there. If it is not there, you can install it in this way, right? You can just run this cell. Okay. Now, the thing is, what if you install something? What if you install some particular uh, libraries which has disrupted your working environment, right? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes we misjudge and install something and our working environment doesn't really work. Then what will you do? The simplest thing is you need to go to runtime right here. And then you need to go to restart session. 
So if you simply restart the session, then all the new things that you installed will automatically be gone. So you will be started with again a fresh environment. So that is the beauty of Google Colab. So there is no chance of breaking anything because it is in the browser and everything is well maintained. Next thing that I want to want you to know is Google Colab actually has its free GPU access. So if I go to edit right here and then go to notebook settings right here, you can see that there is a CPU option and there are the GPU options as well. You can actually choose a GPU as well. So let me use a GPU, maybe a hundred GPU. Okay, save. So you can see that it is connecting. Let it connect first. Okay, so I have covered the advantages of Colab. So I am now at this point. So I'm, I'm now showing you how to access the GPU. Okay, so it is connecting, it is mounting to drive and many other things. Okay, so something has appeared right here. Okay, so if you go right here, you can see that I have been allocated 40 GB of GPU RAM, which is quite a lot. Now understand that I'm actually using the Colab Pro version, which is the paid version of Colab. If you are using the free version, this will not be the case. It will be a much smaller number amount of GPU. Now, another thing is uh, I will always actually have access to GPU since I'm using the Pro version. But if you're using the free version, based on availability, you may or may not get access to GPU. But many times you actually get access to GPU because I was using the free version for a long time, right? And the RAM and everything is, I think, pretty good even in the free version. So free version is also very good. If, if you are trying to run a very a very big training code, which takes uh, like maybe eight hours or 10 hours and requires heavy amount of GPU, then maybe this is not the, not the correct place for you. But if you are trying to run something which takes an hour or two, then I think that is very good. Good enough, free version is good enough for them. Okay. So that is how you go to the GPU. Okay. Now, let, let me just, uh, uh, I mean, get back to my CPU because I don't want uh, Colab to eat up uh, all my uh, GPU usage units because even in the paid version, you can actually have fixed access to GPU. Like there are units you can buy and you can have a free ex I mean, access only at that time point. After that, I have to use the free version again. Okay, so in, anyway, I think what I will do now is I will just uh, close this session I will just uh, like delete, terminate these run times. Yeah, okay. So everything is closed now. Okay. Let me actually open, sorry. Okay. okay, fine, so it is done. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is I've already shown you installation by doing the not sign and pip install. Then let's see how do we access the files from Google Drive because obviously we have to work on different files, right? We may want to open a CSV file or a text file or some other thing. So how do we do that? Okay. So let me first show you my directory structure. So you can see inside this folder, I have this file called samplepredictions.csv. Let me show you this. So you can see that it is a CSV file with some with three columns. So how can I access this file from Colab? So let me do one thing. Let me actually open a new notebook so that I can show you how to mount the notebook. So let, let me open this first. You can also let me connect it. So when you connect the notebook, by default, it will be a CPU notebook. It will not be a GPU notebook. Then you can uh, come here and like uh, transform it to GPU notebook. Okay. Then in order to access the files, you need to go here, files, right? You can see that there are two things here. There is no need at all to touch any of these things. You need to click on here, mount drive. So let me click here. And you are going to connect to Google Drive. You are going to give the permission here. So just wait a few seconds. So you can see that the drive has appeared here. This is my Google Drive. So if you go down here, my drive, then yeah, the tutorial. Okay, yeah. So you can see that the sample predictions that CSV is here, you can copy this path. 
you can right click and copy this path and you can paste it right here. So this is basically your CSV file path and now you can actually assign it to maybe a variable, say file path, and then you can access, read this file or do anything you want with this file, okay? So this is basically how you can access files from Google Drive in Google Colab. So it's very, very simple. You know, if you want, you can also directly upload files right here. You can just click on here and maybe directly upload this file right here, open. So it will give you a warning. So what it's what this warning is telling you is when you when you are going to shut down this Google Colab, this file that we have just uploaded, the sample operations.csv, it will get deleted from this particular place. I mean, that is very obvious. So if you are working with big files, I don't think this is a good way to do this. You should save those in your Google Drive and then work on Google Colab. So that is my suggestion to you. Okay, fine. So, so if you want to access this file, you can also copy path. You can see if I write here, it is slash content slash sample operations.csv. So that is what the path is. So that is how you can access the files. Then there is, then let me talk about some problems as well, which is the storage problem in Colab. Now you can see that we can access Google Drive files, right? Google Drive files from Google Colab. Now, if you are using a free personal Gmail account, then there is only 15 GB of space in your personal Google Drive, right? So that can cause some issues because then your uh, Google Drive storage can be over. So if you want, you can buy Google Drive storage. Or if you have an institutional Gmail account from your institution, from, from where you are studying in, then maybe that can have a lot more space in, the, in your Google Drive. So in that case, I would suggest you to open the Google Colab from that particular Gmail account. So that, that is my suggestion to you. But using an institutional G, uh, Google Colab, I mean, using Google Colab account from institutional account has an issue. If you are using, say you are from NUS, right? You are from NUS institution and you are using uh, NUS uh, Gmail account Google Colab, the issue here is that you cannot really uh, like uh, buy, you cannot buy Colab Pro version from the institutional account. You need to buy Colab Pro version or, or you can buy Colab Pro version only from the personal Gmail account. That is the only issue here. Okay. So if you're using free version, completely fine. Just use the big, huge Google Drive storage that you have in your institutional Gmail account. But if you are not doing that, if you are, if you, uh, uh, I mean, if you are not using free version, then you need you need to uh, access Colab from your personal uh, Gmail account because that is the only way you can purchase the pro version. So next is the difference between free and paid version. So I think I've already mentioned this. So in free version, GPU is not always available here, and they will give you only one GPU which has limited storage. But in a uh, paid version, you can have many different GPU storage. You can also have high RAM access, which is like over, I think, 60 GB of RAM, which is quite good. So those things are actually like uh, the difference. Uh, another difference is if you are running some code in Google Colab in a paid version, it will never really stop running. It will not say that it is uh, waiting idle and it will not it will not really hang up on you. Okay, but obviously, if you if you shut down the browser, right? then obviously the code will stop. But Google Colab has different paid versions. So I will actually show you how to access the paid version now. So you can go right here again. You can see that there is a thing called learn more. If you click on this, you can see that there is Colab paid services pricing. So this is 14.46 HGD or Singaporean dollar or something like 10 US dollars, right? This is my current plan. But there is Colab Pro Plus and also there is Colab Enterprise. So I don't think you are going to use Colab Enterprise if you are using personally. So you can use Colab Pro Plus also. The issue is the advantage in Colab Pro Plus is you can even execute your code in background. That means even if you have shut down your browser, your code will still keep on executing. That is the issue here. So if you, are, if you don't have access to uh, some clusters or some server from your uh, institution, then you can actually buy this, uh, uh, like you can uh, pay $72 every month and you can actually have uh, like, I think, uh, not unlimited, I mean, a, a lot of background execution access in Google Colab as well, okay? So that is basically the pricing.
and you can uh, buy this using credit card. So you can just put the credit card number and uh, or the money will be deducted automatically. Okay, so let me see if I have anything else. Yeah, so the condition, as I mentioned earlier, that you need to access Collab from your personal Gmail account, right? That is the only condition. So, okay, that is all for Collab. I hope that you have a nice time coding in Google Collab. So uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, everyone. So hope to see you soon. Thank you.